Hey VC, it's uh, Jonathan, your Cheap and Cheerful Record Collector. Hope everybody's doing well out there today. Um, this can be a video uh, contest entry for Hannah 1000 uh, subs contest. Um, Hannah's got a thousand subs in a year, which is quite impressive. Um, definitely well worth it, uh, well deserved. Great channel, always find something interesting and new that I don't know. And uh, well, congratulations, thousands is, is quite an accomplishment. So, um, let's get right into it, because I have a lot to show. Her questions are very, pretty straightforward. Uh, the first one is three female artists that you really enjoy, love, your top three female artists. This was really hard to pin down, because in my head I'm going through, there's so many great female artists. I mean, you have Janis Joplin, and uh, Joni Mitchell, and uh, Bonnie Raitt, and Kitty Wells, and... Ella Fitzgerald, Lena Horne, D Dinah Washington, um, Chrissy Hines. No one's mentioned um, D D uh, Cindy Lauper yet. Um, Patti Smith. I mean, on and on and on. But all, no matter how great all those artists are, they haven't just didn't meet my top three. And my number one female artist of all time, to me, was a no-brainer, greatest female singer, Billie Holiday. Um, I'm sure a lot of you know Billie Holiday or know of her. Uh, she was the consummate jazz singer, uh, basically used her voice as another instrument in the band, um, improvising, singing in front of the beat, right after the beat. Um, change, I mean, just, it's amazing. And, and the emotion she showed in her singing was just extraordinary. Uh, a musician's musician, as they say. So this is uh, the history of the real Billie Holiday. I have um, this one on Verve. This is All or Nothing at All, Billie Holiday, another two-record set of Billie. Uh, a couple of years ago for Record Store Day, they put out this one, Billie Holiday at Storyville on Black Lion from England. This is on uh, white vinyl, if I remember right. Yeah, on white vinyl, Black Lion. A uh, great performance, not a great recording, but uh, great to have. Um, does a lot of classics on that. Also have The Essential Billie Holiday. So I keep picking up these compilations of some of her best stuff. Uh, I just can't help myself. And I showed recently a 10-inch that I picked up uh, of Billie Holiday Sings, which is another really hard-to-find great album. So yeah, number one, without a doubt. Billie Holiday, greatest, greatest female singer of all time. Number two was also easy for me. I went a completely different way. I went to country, and I went to Patsy Cline. Uh, again, the emotion she can convey in her singing, uh, you can hear her voice, you can hear her crying as she sings some of these songs. It's just emotionally extremely moving, and um, there was no one like Patsy. Patsy Cline, this is uh, Patsy Cline's greatest hits. Also have the uh, Patsy Cline story. Also a great record, two record set on MCA, and one more is Volume Three Country Classics Patsy Cline. So Patsy just uh, to me, the emotion she conveys is just unbelievable, and you can hear the crying in her voice. It just blows me away. Last female singer without a doubt, had to end up with the Queen of Soul, Aretha Franklin. And this is uh, Lady Soul, one of the great uh, albums of all time. And um, this is the album that, 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 that has Eric Clapton on it, yeah. Uh, the guitar obligato on Good To Me, As I Am To You, is by Eric Clapton of Cream. So that's uh, when this was recorded. Sorry about the glare there. I'm trying to get, well, there it is. So, Aretha Franklin, Lady Soul, number three. Also have Aretha Now, another great album. I got a lot of Aretha albums, a lot more than I'm showing. Uh, Aretha Live in Paris. And the last one I have is Aretha Live at the Fillmore West. And uh, Ray Charles comes out and uh, sings in the uh, uh, encore in this, which is a great, great bit. Anyway, those are my three. Old school, 
uh, Billie Holiday, Patsy Klein, and Aretha Franklin. All right, so those are the three female artists. Then uh, uh, Hannah said to pick a subgenre. And I'm not really good at figuring out different genres and what's what and who's where. But one of the subgenres I really love is part of country. And it was developed in the 1930s by this one man. And his name is Bob Wills. And it's basically country swing. Uh, in the 1930s, Bob Wills was listening to a lot of Benny Goodman and a lot of swing jazz music and really fell in love with it and decided to incorporate it into his uh, band. And he created this new music called Country Swing. And uh, this is an album called Hang Bob Wills Special, Bob Wills and his Texas Playboys. And um, also have this one, Bob Wills and the Texas Playboys, 24 Greatest Hits. Um... A lot of people now pay homage to Bob Wills. I mean, there was a Bob Wills tribute album that had everybody from uh, Willie Nelson to Ricky, Ricky Skaggs playing on it. So they always play a couple of uh, country swing songs. But there's one band that's been playing country swing for over 30 years now, and uh, they've kept the uh, lamplight burning, shall you say, of country western, of country swing, and that uh, went western swing, and that is Asleep at the Wheel. Um, they've been doing this for over 30 years now. We saw them about a year or so ago here in Portland, and they still crank out a great, great show. Uh, great Western Swing. If you don't know them, I would definitely check them out. Asleep at the Wheel. I got one. This is their first album put out many years ago. Asleep at the Wheel. This is from, gotta be, gotta be mid 70s. There's no date on it. But great stuff. So that's my first uh, subgenre would be Western Swing. The next uh, subgenre I have, I really enjoy the blues. And there is, of course, Chicago blues. There's Texas blues, all sorts of blues. I'm a big country blues fan. And though there are uh, more well-known country blues artists, my absolute all-time favorite is Mississippi John Hurt. Um, he's more like folk country blues. Great guitar player, great singer. He uh, was rediscovered in the 1960s after he put out a couple of recordings in the 20s and 30s and went back to uh, Mississippi, I guess it was, and uh, became a sharecropper. And in the early 60s, some people heard his earlier stuff in the 20s and 30s and went looking for them, him and finally found him and brought him back and he toured the country. And I was lucky enough to see him in New York back in like 64, 65, somewhere around that was like 15, 16 years old. And uh, so this is Mississippi John Hurt today. This record again, I'm at 64, I'm thinking. And uh, just great, great blues man. Uh, Mississippi John Hurt. Maybe that'll be the shot for the, there you go. Okay, and the last question she had is your favorite piece of audio gear. Um, I've had the same amplifier, this NAD amplifier I've had for over 30 years until two weeks ago. And two weeks ago, I finally uh, decided I needed more power for the speakers I have. So I'll show you. I um, found online at, um, whoops, sorry, at, on Craigslist, a guy was selling an Adcom model GFA 545 power amp. And along with that, I got an Adcom uh, Model GTP 500, which is a preamp. And with these items, it's like I have a brand new stereo system. And it's like I have a new record collection at the same time. It's uh, been an amazing experience. These records, these uh, amplifiers have just changed everything. Um, I'm hearing things I never heard before. Uh, actually, I was listening to a Frank Sinatra album the other day. And I've heard this record hundreds of times. I know everything about it. And all of a sudden, I could hear Frank snapping his fingers to the beat, which I had never heard before, and it was all because of the new amp. So that's my newest uh, uh, um, item I've gotten in my system, and uh, really love it. Uh, that's Adcom. So those are the three questions. And um, Hannah, once again, congratulations on a thousand subs. It's an amazing achievement, uh, well deserved, and. Um, until next time, peace.